Hey guys, it's Baban and I'm back with another speed drafting and on this one we are going to be swapping between these two commissions where I am drawing people from their reference photos of themselves. I just want to say thank you to the commissioners for letting me use their reference photos in the video and here we go. Okay, so I'm starting off this little icon one, we're going to do the sketch for that and then we're going to swap to the sketch for the other one and we're just going to keep flipping flopping between them like that. So with this video, I kind of wanted to talk about something that I know people struggle quite a lot with, which is either drawing things like consistently or drawing things like this from reference and getting like the right face shape and the right kind of features on someone. And while I'm drawing this, you can see me like erasing stuff and tweaking it slightly to get it like just right, especially around the nose because I wasn't exaggerating it enough. Um, and it, it's a really difficult thing to do. And I mean, I used to do it a lot, especially with trying to get faces consistent. Um, I'd like draw from reference just quick little things to try and pick out the face shapes or I'd try to like draw a character that I had and draw their face consistently and it was just absolutely terrible. I just had a really hard time with it. But um, the more I did it, the more I got used to it. Um, but it wasn't like just doing it, it was doing it in more of a way that I could learn from it, as in like more picking the shapes out of the face and trying to reproduce them simpler. Um, I guess more towards how you do figure drawing, but just drawing a bunch of faces and trying to get the likeness in just a couple of lines and get the proportions down so that it was recognisable as the person from the photograph. And I know you guys hate the word, but I'm going to have to say it, it p -p 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 practice which it does take a lot of and honestly a lot of it is just understanding fundamentals and how to construct a face in the first place before you start messing about with the proportions of it to try and give it a likeness to someone but that is the way that I kind of go about understanding it and studying that kind of thing so I mean you've got to know how to construct something first before you can get a likeness but um, you can also like do a bunch of quick little sketches like I suggested to try and start working on that kind of thing and getting the basic proportions and shapes of things. Uh, what I also like to really do is I, I stare at people a lot and I, I do it in public too and I, I try not to but I kind of can't help it because people have interesting faces um, and I try and pick out the things about their face that make them stand out and makes it look like them. Like, um, for example, on this, um, this dude's got a really, really kind of squared off chin and I've tried to exaggerate that a little bit and his nose is um, quite forward and straight. And oh my God, the eyebrows, the eyebrows are amazing. I love it when people have got really defined features that I can draw. And as we swap back to this one as well, this dude, as you could probably see in the pictures, has got like a really defined nose and it looks awesome. It was so much fun to draw. So honestly, that's a really big part of trying to get a likeness because if you see people do caricatures that are more like stretched out and exaggerated, then that is the thing that they will latch onto and exaggerate. And even though the proportions are so stretched out and weird, um, it's those little shapes um, in the different features on their face that make them recognisable. And car caricatures aren't really my thing, I'm more into just um, simplifying stuff and making it a bit more cartoony. And if you guys kind of want to understand like how I do that a little bit better, I've got a video where I talk about how to study by drawing and that's more about looking at a reference photo and then like drawing it and figuring out how to like simplify and stylize stuff from a photograph or from different references so I'll put a link to that one at the end because that's kind of talking about the same thing and you can pretty much apply that to anything um but yeah pretty much what I like to do is just break down the shapes and notice what kind of like weird curves you've got going on or sharpness um, if, if, if it's more like blocky or if it's more curved and flowy and like I say you can pretty much um, apply that to anything and have it work it's just a lot more difficult with faces because they're difficult to draw in the first place um, and I, I don't think I'm amazing at it yet but I'm kind of getting there and there's some things that I've picked up through studying and working on stuff like this um, that helps me how to work things out basically and how to make it look like someone but yeah, that's that's pretty much the main thing I do to test it out is to just find a bunch of pictures of people. Uh, there's some like figure drawing websites where you can get pictures of faces as well rather than the entire body that you can go through and you can just do like, I guess like 10 second, 20 second little drawings of those and try and get the proportions of the face and everything and you know, like the shape of the nose, the shape of the eyebrows, um, the kind of distance everything is away from each other. And I think that'll help more with doing consistent designs or consistent faces because 
um, I found that now I can do this sort of thing a little bit better than if I draw a character once um, and I'm like working on different designs from. If I find one that I like, it's easier for me to look at that image and reproduce what I've got there, like at a different angle or something, or just redraw it a bunch of times. So it's not just gonna help you like drawing from references, it's gonna help you with also like drawing things consistently if you need to redraw things a whole bunch. Um, something that I like to do with these as well is when I'm doing a commission for someone, I'll usually ask for not the specific pose that they want because a lot of the time they don't really know what kind of pose they want or they've got a little bit of an idea or they're kind of camera shy and they don't want to take a picture of themselves in a silly pose. Um, so I'll ask for a photo of them from the front, from the side and from three quarters and that gives me enough information to be able to understand the kind of proportions that their face has as well as the shape of like their nose or something. I can't really tell what shape it is if it's just from the front so I need a side view to see like how far it comes out, what like what sort of shadow it should be casting if I need to put shadows on something. Um, and that's where it comes in again where fundamentals are important because if you've only got that as reference and you need to draw them at a different angle, that should be enough information for you to be able to understand them and apply it to whatever kind of pose you're putting their face in. Um, I do sometimes as well ask for like a few different expressions if I'm going to be using them, um, but sometimes I will just exaggerate them. But if they're not really showing much emotion in their face in, in the photos that they've taken, I'll ask them to like maybe smile a little bit to see what their cheeks do when it moves. Um, you can usually tell if people's eyebrows go up really high because they'll have like the creases on their forehead. Um, wrinkles can be a really, really good indicator of how someone's face moves. So th those are another really useful thing if you can um, like understand how the face moves and how, how to um, construct a face, uh, some kind of expression that you want um, and take into account where the wrinkles are on someone's face. You can kind of figure out like how much their face is gonna change. Obviously the ideal situation is to have someone sat in front of you for you to be able to draw like from life but with this sort of thing that's not doable at all. <laughs> I've only got photos to work from so um, it, it can be a little bit more difficult but you've got to be able to um, work with what you've got and you've got to get someone to uh, give you the right kind of references. You've got to know what you need to ask for to be able to produce the right kind of result. Um, something else that might help as well is doing like self portraits or per uh, portraits of people that will let you draw them and won't, won't think that you're weird for wanting to draw them. I know some people like to go out in public and sit around and draw people but if that's not your cup of tea you can always do self portraits from a mirror or something. I've got one that I did, um, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one along with the other one that I mentioned. Oh, another little thing that tends to really give um, people's face away is the kind of hairline they have or if they have a big forehead, because so some people do. Um, and I'd say don't be afraid to draw those little things because th that tends to be the kind of thing that people are a little bit self-conscious about. But don't be afraid of drawing that kind of thing because if you try and remove it, then it's not gonna look like them as much. And through doing like a lot of art and stuff, <laughs> I've really started to appreciate the kind of diversity that you get in people's faces. Um, like drawing a lot of people with different faces as well can also help to build up your visual library. So I mean, if you are gonna go and draw different characters, then you've got a bit more of a built up idea of what kind of different face shapes you can give them, like what kind of weird ears you can give them, if you can give them like a big forehead or a big chin and what that would look like on someone. And it, it can help to figure out like what kind of characteristics work well for a certain character because um, I mean that's, that's part of trying to convey who the character is, the design of them, including their face. Um, I, th I think ears are another one that people tend to forget and jawbones, jaw jawbones can be pretty cool because there's some people that have got really concave sheep, che sheeps, cheeks, <laughs> sheeps, <laughs> and really defined jawbones and then all the muscles around the mouth are more defined this oh man there's all sorts of weird shapes and then you've got beards and things that just completely change the shape of someone's face and i mean if, if you're struggling trying to draw a character or come up with like a design or something to mess about with different shapes 
um, is a pretty easy way to do that um, or a way to just test out different shapes if you have a bit of trouble with same face. I, I don't think I ever had trouble with same face. I always had like a little bit of variation in my faces, but I know that people do struggle with that. Um, so it's, it's easy to, instead of just change the hair and be like, oh, it's a completely different character, you can start to use different shapes to define the features on their face. Um, you, I mean, you can simplify it to like triangles, squares and circles if you want. And then just with those three, you've already got a way expanded library compared to just using the same shape on everything. And I mean, you can apply it to like eyes, noses, mouths, cheeks, chins, like hairstyles even. You can apply the shapes to rather than um, just like put more detail into the hair. Because every no everyone knows what a circle, a square and a triangle look like. Um, but if, if you go and like study like this and do like quick little sketches of people or try and capture their likeness, then the more you do that, the more of a library you're gonna, you're gonna have because you can start to understand the kind of shapes that present themselves in people's faces and then you can start applying that and reusing those shapes in different things. And then the more defined and different you can make those shapes between characters, the more they're gonna stand out and the more like different and varied they're gonna be and the more like different expressions you can show on their face, all the different, just all the weird different shapes, man. There's just, oh, there's so much. I, I think this is why I like staring at people's faces like accidentally in public because I, 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 want, I want your weird face in my visual library. No, something that I really didn't pay a lot of attention to when I was younger was how my own actual face looked. Um, and now I kind of know how it looks to the point where I can pretty much reproduce it, drawing it without looking at myself. Um, just by like drawing it a bunch and doing like quick little self portraits to figure out how it works and what it looks like. Um, but I, I think to some extent um, that kind of leaks into my character designs and stuff. I know there's that little trope of like the stuff the artist draws looks like the artist. Um, I, I've really seen some cases where that is very, very true and somewhere it really isn't. But um, I, I think I think it can if you um, study your own face quite a lot, like I tend to. Um, yeah, I, di I really didn't used to have any kind of clue about what I looked like, especially from any other angle than straight on. But um, I, I've got a bit of a weird face myself. Not, not that you guys uh, don't know that though. Um, my, my face is kind of normal from the front and if I turn to the side it's kind of like whoa 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 what, what's all this and that's the reason why when you ask for references you ask for one like from the side and the front and three quarters because sometimes people have strange faces like me. Oh, uh, I, I don't think I've actually talked about any of the drawing during this video yet. Um, so, oh, something that I've been doing is trying to use more overlays that I have of textured sheets that I've made myself just with paint and coffee and kind of splashing it around on the paper and making a bit of a scratchy mess. Um, I also made myself some brushes that I've been using. I don't think I used it in either one of these, but um, I thought the one that I used in this, because it had a little bit of blue and yellow in it, it kind of brought out some more colours in the background and made it look a little bit nebulary when I put it over the top of everything. I kind of like the more washed out papery look as well that I had going on with this one. I've also started to move towards more using the, I think it's called the fingertip tool in the like blur tool menu to kind of pull the shapes out when I've done my cell shading. Uh, anyway, yeah, there we go. This is done. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. If it did, give us a like, share if you think it'll help someone else and subscribe for new videos on Fridays. There'll be a link down in the description to the Discord group if you want to come and chat art stuff with us. There'll also be links to my commission information if you want to get a commission of yourself drawn. There's also links to prints of stuff that I've already drawn and links to where I post stuff. Uh, yeah, f f thanks for watching, lads. Bye bye.